Today, I want to share with you five books that turned me into a leader. And if that has been a pull on your heart, whether you are in corporate, a network marketing leader, or you want this for yourself as a parent or a spouse, this is going to be an episode for you. Being a leader was a pull on my heart for years. Actually, back to when I was in my first job as a registered dietitian, I guess you could say I was at the bottom of the totem poll. I was a business development rep, which is a salesperson for the company. And, you know, I was young and new, but I had just been introduced to network marketing really for the first time ever. I did not even know what that business model was, but I knew that if you could get people on board, then your life could be like really amazing. So from that time I thought, Oh, like this is great. Like I would love to be a leader and I would love to have people who followed me. And I had tried recruiting people and really done what people like said to make this happen and it just wasn't going well, but I didn't ever give up. I felt like giving up, but finally, thankfully, after two years of trying, I doubled down in a different way by learning sales skills. And I took Guide Culture's program when it was very first new. And so I got really focused on how can I be confident? How can I be clear about what I believe and what people can have when they work with me, when they buy from me? And I really wanted to do that the right way. That was something I had been praying about for years. So that was really, really important to me. And after I learned sales skills, you know, because the training was so new and there was no context for this. I mean, I didn't even want to tell people I learned how to be a confident salesperson because one, I didn't want to admit that I needed help. And two, it would have to show people that I wasn't confident and that I was actually like selling something. So it would, it was all just kind of weird. And so there was no context, no support for how to talk about this. It was brand new. And so what, what really happened at the time was I took the training, took it so seriously. And I also, knew that it was just going to be one chain link in my growth. I knew that it was not all the pressure was not on this one training to get me where I wanted to go. So I actually stayed super involved, took every I was committed to taking every training because I knew it brought out the best in me and helped sharpen who I wanted to be. But I also looked up and I thought, what else can complement who I'm growing into being? I want to be a leader. I don't just want to be like good at this. I want to be amazing. I want to be like on stages. Like I just could see and feel this thing. So I knew that there was going to be some complementary tangents to my growth. And I encourage you to think the same way. Like what are the complementary things that you need to make you who you want to become? Um, maybe you do need to learn. I mean, I, you do need to learn communication skills that help inspire people. We'll talk. I mean, we talk about that all the time here, but I'll definitely get into it more this podcast. It's so important. I, I'm not even going to go off. Just know that there are complimentary things for you to learn that create the strong chain link that you'll need as you grow into your next levels. So I knew, I knew that if I was going to lead people, that people needed to want to follow me. Like, and that's true for you too. People need to want to take a, you know, a step towards you, to lean into you, to buy from you. You. And here's the sobering, humbling reality. I had to be valuable to them and good enough. I know that we live in a world that's like, you are valuable. You are good enough. Don't feel like you need to change. And I just really don't agree with that. I really believe that when you become who you're made to be, you do change. And the kind of you know, maybe selfish, unsharp. Well, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Unpoised. Like, I don't know, just the worst parts of you can be pruned back and you actually can become better in the areas that you were meant to thrive in. And maybe that is leadership or speaking or, you know, whatever God made you to do. Like you should be wanting to get better at that because people want to follow someone who brings value to them and who is good enough to be in that position. There's a reason why not every single person in the corporation is like titled as a leader because only certain people have really earned it. And that is okay. That is okay. You can earn it. This is for you. Even if you have proven yourself and not followed through so many times, that is okay. You can still become the leader that you were meant to be because not only is it possible, but it's necessary. Like business demands the best of you. Sales demands the best of you because people are looking for you to lead them. They need you to help show them a better way. And you can only do that if you're living it. So this is really important. So on my journey to challenging myself and knowing that I like wanted to change in the very best way toward how God 
you know, saw me and I needed to take some action. I knew this. And so I kind of set out some things I was going to do in this year. It was 2019. And one of those things was to read a book a month. And I hadn't read at all. I mean, I had done really well in school because I read like that stuff, but I, that was not the same as like reading any personal development at all. So I had Honestly, all my personal development was like going to church. And thankfully, that actually was amazing because I read back my journals and like, wow, like that was awesome content. And it really did change me. And the more important thing for me at this time, and it might be true for you too, is that because I was not a reader, like I had maybe read three books that were not for school. Like maybe, honestly, I don't even know. I was not a reader. This challenge was going to force me to cut back, make time, prove to myself that I could do things that were uncomfortable and hard because that discomfort is where you get stronger, right? Just like working out, discomfort is proof that you're moving in the right direction, not proof that you are hurting yourself. That burn is actually a really good thing. So I knew that this would challenge me, really did show that I could make a new habit. And thankfully, when you read, you learn stuff along the way. So I, I, I had this specific goal that I wanted to recruit like 20 people this year. And by the end of that year, which that was my goal, it was uh, what ended up actually happening was not only did I do that, but I ended up becoming co-CEOs with Macy in Guide Culture, which was so unexpected and I mean, I just would have like looked at you really weird. Like if you're watching the YouTube video right now, I'm like, I think back to myself and that would have made really no sense because who was I to do that? And I wasn't in the place to do that. And at the time of this journey, but God knew. And that's why your growth will take you the places where that you're meant to go. Only if you are willing to do uncomfortable things. And I know that this, I'm, it doesn't feel like I'm setting up a book podcast right now, but that's because this is so much more than just what book you're reading. This is about, what discomfort are you willing to go through to become who you're meant to be? And so what I do want to tell you is that in that process, some lessons that I learned that helped shape the leader in me, and that could absolutely be the case for you too. So I'm going to start kind of going to go in as best of order as I can remember. But for sure, the very first book that I read on my own makes a great audiobook as well. And I encourage you to buy both is The Psychology of Winning by Dennis Whaley. This book is all about having a winning mindset. In fact, it is the 10 qualities of a total winner winning mindset. And what he says that is so true and so important is that you move in the direction of your currently dominant thought for better or for worse. You can have positive thoughts. You can have negative thoughts. Your brain tends to want to lean into the negative because it wants to protect you. And that is actually okay. Knowing what pain, what danger, what downfalls are in your life is good because you can acknowledge it, make a change, make an adjustment and move forward. But what most people see is they see the danger and they say, oh, I shouldn't take any steps at all. But what you can do as a winner is to look at the dominant thought of desire. What mission are you on? Why are you on it? Who can you help? And that desire pulls you forward and it almost makes you feel like I can't not do this because that desire is out there. That result, that person is out there for me to help and winners take steps steps toward desire. That is so, so important. And another principle that kind of goes along with the dominant thought is that a winner knows that the way that you present yourself is really just a reflection on how you feel about yourself on the inside, how you see yourself. And do you see yourself as like, do you respect yourself? Is that relationship with yourself good? Because when it is, you are willing to show and take care of yourself. And that is when people see that they say, man, this is someone who respects themselves and I want to be I want to be around that. I see that they are putting in an effort because they are going places and people want to be led by someone who feels that way about themselves. This is so important. Respect overflows and you building that relationship with yourself, following through on what you say you're going to do, it builds confidence and that confidence is something that people can feel and that's what people want in a leader. It's so important. The next book that I have talked about so much is Start With Why. And this is one of those books that really sits on my desk a lot. It's, it doesn't look good. It's very kind of torn up. And this is how I believe books should look. It's what I want. Persuade for good. Our book to look on your desk because it's, it's really such a useful reference book. And the subtitle of it 
is how great leaders inspire people to take action. How great leaders inspire people to take action. That is what you want, ultimately, is to be someone that helps someone take a step forward. What's easy to do is to manipulate people into buying. That's the that's what most people think selling is, is manipulation, where you do BOGO deals and you do, you know, like time constraints, like, oh, well, you just have until tomorrow and all these things that are honestly fine. Like they're, they don't make anyone a good or a bad person. But what is really valuable is to inspire them to take action for them to feel why it matters that they buy and transform their life. Because what most people do is they just sell what they do. They don't sell why it matters. And this book explains why it's so hard to talk about why it matters. Your brain was actually designed to very easily compute and explain facts. Like, you know, this is a lip gloss. The skincare has blank ingredient. I sell 30 minute workouts. I'm a health coach. These things are, you know, the more kind of robotic facts around what you do. And that is okay. They are good to know. They are also not the reason people buy. People buy not what you do, but why you do do it. And so it's really a communication hierarchy that he explains in here. And people follow the ones who can explain why. And this is like to your living out your potential or to your detriment, if you can learn this. And I believe that Simon Sinek would like love School of Sales because there's actually a framework to doing this. In School of Sales, in week one, you actually learned how to go from what to why in under 10 seconds. So what you do, I'm going to give you a couple examples. And they'll say like, you know, I do, I sell meal plans, I sell strategies. So coaching, I help people heal their gut. Like there's all these things on the face. It's like, yeah, it's cool, but I don't see why it matters to me. And the most valuable thing you can do is tell someone why it matters, the emotional reason for buying. So you can, instead of just talking about how you have workouts, you could say this workout is 30 minutes. So that way you can go have energy to make memories at the park with your kids. This skincare, it hydrates your skin. That way you can feel confident to really spend more time with your daughter's teacher and build that relationship that she knows adults care about her. And that is what's going to help her be confident for the long haul. These are the reasons why what you do matters and you can learn how to communicate this way on autopilot because this is the person people want to buy from and you're not naturally able to do this because you can feel you might be listening to that and you're like yeah memories yeah building confidence yeah it's awesome but most people have a very hard imbalance in how they talk they're like oh my gosh these are all the facts about why it matters and these are all the emotional reasons and there's not a lot of balance but you can go from what to why in under 10 seconds and that will change everything and people will look at you like, whoa, that is different. That is actually helpful and valuable when I hear it. So start with why will wake you up to knowing that leaders sell a mission. They sell why it matters, why the mission matters, and people want to be led by that. Okay, another book that I read really early on when I was trying so hard to bring out the leader in me is How to Win Friends and Influence People. One of the core ideas in this book is that another humbling truth is that people, they care about themselves more than they care about you. So what most people think that they should do when they're selling is talk about how much money they make, how many results they've got, and what they care about. And that being influential is like, like honestly, like looking good, acting, you know, a certain way and showing those results. And while that absolutely can be a way of demonstrating your growth, it's great. What people mostly care about is what's in it for them and how interested you are in them, like caring about them as a person. This is why having a sales message that is you focused, okay, when you're saying it, I'm like, this whole podcast is you focused. There have been stories about me, but the whole point is that you can grow into the leader that you are meant to be. And I hope that that resonates and it helps you feel like, oh, this is like a big deal for my life. Catherine cares about my life, who I get to be to my kids, to my team through this podcast. So every message that you have can be focused on someone else. And I mean, this this can even come down to, or it should come down to asking people questions. I mean, when it comes to selling specifically, it feels like, oh, you need to have all the right things to say. Get like, get your ducks in a row, have the right thing to say. That way people will know that you know what you're talking about. And there is an element of having the right things to say at the right time, only after you have asked the right questions 
to the person to show and to gain insight into what they even want. That is the biggest part of this whole thing. And when you ask them questions and you are interested, that's what makes you interesting to other people. And they look at you and they think, oh, that's different. I want to be led by that. And Zig Ziglar says it so well, so concisely. You can have everything you want in life if you will help enough other people get what they want. It is so powerful when you focus on other people, your money, your results, it all ends up being a byproduct of you focusing on them. So a shift that you can make in your mind right now is not like, oh, how can I hit my goals? But how can I help 10 people win? How can I help 100 people win? You'll be relentless on becoming better so that they win and then you get the results. That's just an amazing truth about life. Another book that I have honestly not talked about a lot and it's totally different from what I've said so far is a book called The Slight Edge. And The Slight Edge really is about habits in a lot of ways. And it doesn't talk about habit forming, but it's actually more about discipline in that The Slight Edge, the difference between winners and losers, winners and losers both have the same goals, but it's the winners who are in the top 5% because they are willing to subscribe to simple discipline disciplines that are easy to do and also easy not to do. It is terrifying how the smallest things are actually the biggest things, right? Like, and it's interesting because the nuance here is that you'll have people who say, have this type of morning routine, have this type of nighttime routine or eat this way or journal this way. And it really doesn't matter what you, or like how you do it. What does matter is that you subscribe to simple disciplines that put you, I mean, 95% ahead of everybody else because most people are not willing to do disciplined things. But as a leader, people want to follow disciplined people. I'll give you just a few examples of things I did. I subscribed to a lot of little disciplines in 2019 and I've tried to maintain almost all of them, but this year was aggressive. It was like my full-time job to be uncomfortable and grow. Most people probably wouldn't recommend it, but I did do it. I set fitness goals that I would start running and it was a small goal. I actually wanted to be able to run five miles. And so that was my yearly goal. And someone's probably laughing at me saying that, but for me, that was a really big deal. So every day almost, or at least a few times a week, I would run. And that was a discipline for me to get to be able to run five miles. And I did. Reading these books is one. And what's important is that it's easy to do, easy not to do. Easy to make excuses, so easy. And there's honestly almost always a legitimate feeling excuse for why you're not gonna do something. One of the most real things in this book is the graph that the author has. It looks like the two people who are doing, one's doing the discipline thing and the other one is not. The disciplined person, it it looks like they're neck and neck, like their life isn't really doing anything differently. Like, oh, I'm eating healthy, I'm exercising, I'm reading, I'm doing sales skills and I feel like my results are the same as everybody else. I haven't seen anything yet. But in reality, as time goes on, as life goes on, if you're watching the video, you'll see there's an exponential growth that happens eventually, eventually. And so you have to be patient and you have to trust. And honestly, you have to subscribe to these disciplines for how it makes you, for the certainty that it gives you today. Maybe it's not even a feeling. Maybe you hate the feeling of eating healthy, the hate the feeling of working out. And I invite you and I tell you it's okay to subscribe to it anyway, because you are not at the will of your feelings. You are at the will of the certainty that you are creating a fertile soil. You are relentlessly planting seeds, knowing that even if you're in the dark underground, that there are roots and there's stuff coming above the surface eventually. And even if it doesn't look how you want it to yet, every oak tree was also a tiny little looking weed thing, but it's not a weed anymore. So I I just want you to believe. And when it comes to your leadership, people want to be led by a disciplined person, period, period. People wanna be led by a disciplined person because deep down, or maybe not even that deep down, people want to be healthy, vibrant, wealthy, whatever that looks like for them, they want it. And only disciplined people get that stuff. Casual carelessness gets you nowhere. It gets you nowhere. Discipline will get you where you wanna go. And it is harder and it is, I would claim unpopular. It might be popular on Instagram, but when you're in your real life, it's like, oh really, you're going to bed early? Oh, you gotta go read, cool, right? But it, what happens is you get set apart eventually. I mean, I believe you're set apart if, like immediately, but the growth that you will see will come. And so subscribe to it. 
decide what am I going to do that gives me a slight edge because people want to be led by a disciplined person. And you know, we live in such a cool age where you can demonstrate this. You can show people that you are doing the, the things no one else is willing to do. And yeah, you can't show them every last little thing of your life, but you can show them 1%. You can prop up your phone while you're reading. You can prop up your phone while you're cooking. You can prop up your phone while you're on a walk and show them who you're becoming. Show them that you do the hard thing because people want to be led by a disciplined person. This is so important, so important. You can't just say the right things. You have to live a certain type of life, which leads me really well into the last, one of the last books I have a core memory of in the early days of my growing into a leader. By the way, I don't believe you're ever done growing. I just have to, I'm just saying it like that for this episode, like growing into a leader that I knew was possible, but was like zero evidence of it. And there was evidence by the end of this very intentional year. And this book was called, is called Intentional Living by John Maxwell. John Maxwell is in amazing prolific writer and if I could sum up this book in one tiny little sentence I would say live a persuasive life live a persuasive life be someone who takes so much action because you believe because you're on mission that people look at you in awe don't do it so that they look at you but do it because you're on mission and when you show them what you're doing and maybe even if you don't they'll see who you're becoming and they'll say wow like they are so brave wow they are changing before my eyes and one of the quotes in this book says it is easier to go from failure to success than excuses to success it's easier to go from failure to success than excuses to success you learn nothing from making excuses and you learn so much from failure if you're willing to actually do something and then think why did that not go well like ask someone who loves you. Why didn't that go well? Get some feedback. Don't just think about it in your own brain. You probably don't know, but someone who loves you enough to be honest with you, that changes everything. And that's another reason why School of Sales is awesome. You get feedback on your sales message, honest feedback, trained professional feedback, so important. And when you take this intentional action, right, you are willing to go from failure to success. You're willing to put yourself out there. You're willing to do the things that no one else is willing to do. You change and you don't just change like go from left to right. You are up a level. You have more perspective. You have a better view. You understand the context for why business is the way it is, for why people are the way they are. You have gotten 1% more clarity on life, honestly. And that only comes from intentional living. But when you invest in yourself, invest in the hard stuff that's when you grow just like a penny there's actually a story in here about a penny that doubles for a month you might if i were to ask you quickly hey five seconds what would a penny doubling for a month do what would that dollar be you might say ten thousand dollars that's what comes to my brain a penny that doubles when you invest in yourself even the tiny little penny tiny penny i hate finding pennies i always feel like what is the point of a penny but a penny that doubles every single day for a month ends up being over $21 million, over $21 million. When you invest, you grow. And people wanna be led by someone who is evolving, who is growing, who is a few steps ahead of them. You don't have to be light years ahead of someone to lead them. And gosh, I remember having this thought around the time I read this book, which is like so many people, you wanna impress the people who are ahead of you. Like, oh, I just wanna make you know them like feel like I'm cool, like I know what I'm doing, like I'm posting the trendy stuff, whatever. And really what you're meant to do is to inspire the people behind you. Look back, look at the people two or three, five steps behind you and think, how can I help them get to where I'm at now? It's not a whole lot, but if they just had some hope, if they had some guidance, man, that would change their life. People want to follow someone who's evolving, who shows them the possibility that's on the other side of risk and who proves that the riskiest thing of all is to stay the same. That's the riskiest thing of all. And you prove it by growing and reaping the results of that growth. Those are the five books that turned me into a leader in so many ways and changed my mind about who I was and helped me take action. But the thing is that reading these books did not change my life. Reading these books didn't change my life. And just reading them did not turn me into a leader. Using them, using the information, taking action on the books is what grew the fire, changed everything. I would, something very practical 
that I would do is take this, these messages that are in the book, the, the quotes, the lines, the themes, I would use them as evidence. I would use them when I'm on a walk, right? It's like you're on a walk, you're, you're filming something and you can say, hey, you know, it's easier to go from failure to success and excuses to success. Take what you're learning and help people believe that growing is worth it. That's what you're helping people do. No matter what industry you're in, you are helping people become who they were meant to be. And that is a gift. It's an opportunity. And, I, and especially if you're an entrepreneur, nobody, nobody can do it for you. I mean, if you're a human, no one can do it for you. But being an entrepreneur, I mean, the failure rate is so high because no one cares. No one cares that you invested. Your customer does not care that you invested into yourself. They care that you can show them what's possible and that you are the right person that they can trust and you show them that if you can do it, they can do it. So use the stuff that you read in books, take action on it. I would not only do it on Instagram stories to demonstrate what was happening, but also in free trainings. I had no team, I had no one listening to me. And so I would host free trainings and let, you know, kind of just create a sales message. And when I say that, I mean like an inspirational message that helped them take action in some way that would help them become who they were meant to be. Eventually I did have a team and I would use information from books in team calls to support the message, to support the idea that you're bringing forth because no one really, I mean, people will believe you, but they also believe who says so besides you. And these books are stacked with authors who have credibility and who can encourage you that you're not alone because they've walked the road a few steps ahead of you. And I just encourage you always have faith in growing yourself. Oh, I do wanna give you a sixth bonus book. And that is the book of Proverbs. I read that, I read Proverbs all year that year. So it's just one book of the Bible. But I mean, I would say, especially if you're a Christian, but even if you're not, it is a book of the Old Testament and they're short chapters and they're all about wisdom. And it was such an important thing at the time because when you don't feel like things are working out for you, wisdom says, faith says, I believe what I don't see. And wisdom helps you make a decision now for the future that you don't yet see. And it's gonna be uncomfortable. I think it might challenge you. And I, I hope all these books challenge you because being comfortable and being, you know, your ears tickled by like how good you are and how awesome you are, that's just not helpful. So while you are loved, you are valuable. I also, I believe I love you. I believe God loves you too much to leave you where you are. So do grow, do feel the burn, do get into discomfort because the people that you wanna help also are gonna need to get uncomfortable and they need to see it in you first. And that is the growth that you can experience. And that is the person that people want to follow.